Hi there, my name is Damien and in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can bulk import data into Excel using Power Automate without the apply to each add rows action method. So today I'm going to use the Office scripts which is fast and efficient and I'm going to take data from either a SharePoint list or a Dataverse table. So without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here we are in my SharePoint site, and I have a couple of files here already pre-configured. I have an existing file, or what I've called an existing file, that contains a table already pre-configured with six um, columns that are required as part of the data load that I'm doing. I have a file called nothing in me, which has nothing in it. And then I have a customer list, which is a list here with a thousand items of customer data that I'm going to import into my Excel file. I then also have a customer data table on Dataverse, again with a thousand records, and I'm going to retrieve data from this table and import it into Excel extremely fast and efficiently. So let's jump into my flow now and start building. So the first demonstration I'm going to do is a traditional method. I'm going to get some items from this SharePoint list and I'm going to put those items into my existing file. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my SharePoint site, my list name, and I'm going to limit the number of get, get items to 20 because I know this is an inefficient method of loading data into Excel and I don't want the demo to overrun. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add rows into a table and by selecting that action um, we will again select the default location of the file so my demo team site again my document library and the file we're looking for is my existing file because we have a table in there already pre-configured and then we have our table from the drop down and by doing that that now gives us all the column values that we can populate so I'm going to start inserting these dynamic values and you'll notice that as soon as I do that, it will insert this action into an apply to each. So this is maybe a little tip. If you do ever want to use an apply to each, a quick method of, of creating it because Power Automate will assume that you require that because get items retrieves more than one item. So I'll continue with filling in these dynamic values. We'll go with the first name, last name, the address, postcode, and finally the email address and I'm going to save that and put it into a manual test and then by doing so I'm going to jump across onto my existing file and we can actually watch the flow systematically adding the rows into our table so if you've ever done this before and you've done it in bulk, you'll have seen that uh, this process for large numbers of data can take minutes, hours. You can turn on concurrency, but the process can time out. So it's, it's not very reliable when you're looking to bulk load data into Excel. So remember, we put a limit of 20 records onto this uh, get items action. So we now have all 20. And if we jump back to our flow, we can see that within 27 seconds, we've managed to load the 20 rows into our table. So I'm going to jump onto now my office script and show you how that comes together. So I'll start a new flow, which is just a quick shortcut here. And we will start again with the manual trigger. And on this occasion, rather than getting the data from our SharePoint list, I'm going to get the data from our Dataverse table. So I'm going to select our table name, which is customer data. There we go. And again, I'm going to put a limit on a row count limit of 20 just for the first run. Now, one of the things I need to do here is my office script accepts an array. So I need to use the select action which allows me to repurpose the array that's returned from the list rows. So selecting the value, which is a list of all the items that's returned from this list rows, we're going to map out our new array. So I need the ID, I need the first name, I'll need the last name, I'll need the address, postcode, email, 
and I think that's it. And we'll just quickly put the dynamic values in as well. So ID, we'll go and put a name. So we've got the first name, last name, address, postcode, and finally email. And this select action basically gives us a brand new array in this format for this for the for the object, the key and the values. And the next step is to literally run our script. So if you've not run scripts before, you can search for run script there, which is an Excel online action. And again, as before, we need to select the location of the file that we want to run this on and the document library and then the file in question. So I'm going to run it in this demonstration on the nothing in me, which is an existing file, but I will do a demonstration later on that will create a brand new file each time this process is run. So the script I'm looking to run is called create new table. And as soon as I select that, it gives me this uh, dynamic screen here with a list of all the parameters or inputs that my um, formula accepts on my office script. So I created this select action deliberately because you can see here the first input is an array. I'm using this little switch here. We can put it into the array mode and I can insert my array as an input. And then I have a second uh, variable here called sheet name. And this allows the script literally to rename the sheet of my worksheet in Excel. So I'm gonna call it my new sheet rather than sheet one. So I go ahead and save that, but before I run it, I'm going to jump into the script in Excel. So I'm going to go into the nothing in me document and you'll see at the top here, we have an automate tab. And when I jump into that, I can go into all scripts, which will open up my code editor and you'll see I have my create new table script. Now, if I click on my pencil here, I can go into edit mode and hopefully I can zoom in and let you have a a glimpse of my script. So what is it doing here? First of all, it's accepting two inputs, the array of data that we've already populated using that select action and the sheet name, which is a string. And then the first thing that I do is I've defined the header row of my um, table, albeit at this point, it's not a table. It is literally just the first row on my sheet and we have the values ID through to email. Then I've defined the new table and given the table a name. Now this is optional. Uh, I've only done this so that if later on you want to then query this data from the Excel sheet, you can do so using the current actions. Otherwise you'll have a sheet without a table and you won't be able to query that data without creating another Office script. Then using a for loop, I simply go through all the key values and all the objects within the array and populate each row with that data. So you can see that loop here, and you can see the reference to all of the various fields or key values that are in that object. And then finally, at the end of the script, I have what's called an interface defined here, and that again is the values that are within my array, and they are defined for this purpose anyway as strings, but equally you could define them as an integer, and Power Automate will actually enforce that data type via the interface. Anyway, that is my Office script in a nutshell. I'm gonna jump back onto my Power Automate flow and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test this. So you've got to remember in the first instance, what we're doing is we are grabbing 20 records from our database, Dataverse table. We're creating an array and then we're passing that data to our script which will then populate the nothing in me file. So in terms of the runtime, I expect this to run within a matter of seconds. So seven seconds rather than was it 20 seconds or 27 seconds maybe on the, the apply to each method. And if I jump into the nothing in me, it's noted this, there's been a change. I need to reload that screen, but we can now see we have all 20 of those rows added into our table. So I create a new sheet I'm going to delete that original sheet. And what I'm gonna attempt now is I'm gonna edit this flow and rather than have this 20 limit, I'm gonna take that limit out. I'm going to save it. And of course, I'll probably get a wee complaint from Power Automate in the flow checker there, a warning that potentially I'm going to retrieve 
an excessive amount of data, but that's okay in this scenario because I want to retrieve all of those rows. I'm gonna go ahead and test, run. And again, we're gonna list those rows from Dataverse. We're gonna create an array using our select action, and then we're going to pass that array to our script and populate our worksheet. Um, so let's run slightly faster this time round. I'll go back into the nothing in me document. You see here it's asking me to reload. I reload and there we go. We have, if I go to the very end, control and end on the keyboard, I have a thousand records loaded into my Excel sheet in a matter of seconds. So the next part of my demonstration, now that I've loaded the data into an existing file, is to create a brand new file. And uh, I did a, a longer video on this process previously, so I am going to skip some of the, the content, but uh, I'll give you the basics of the process. I'm going to go into my original array here. I'm going to go into Edit, and I'm going to jump back across onto the, the um, flow that I've created previously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this compose action. So this compose action is actually based on a get file content action. So in the earlier video, I've created a blank Excel file. I've run the get file content, and then I've copied the get file content and simply pasted it into a compose action. And so that then allows me to just use a compose action in order to create a brand new file. So I go back into my original flow add an action, go into my clipboard, because I've copied that uh, compose, and I'm gonna paste that compose in there, which is just exactly the same as before. It's got the file content. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a file. And so this file is gonna be created on my existing SharePoint site. I'm going to select my default document library, which is shared documents. The file name, I want to be unique, so I'm going to use the format, if I could spell, format date time expression with UTC now. And uh, I'm going to do that in um, using the year, month, day format. So year, capital M's for month, lowercase for day, and then hours, minutes, and seconds. And that basically allows me to prefix my file with a unique string, ensuring that the file never conflicts, or the file name, sorry, never conflicts. So a new Excel file. Now, something I discovered whilst doing this demonstration is you must always type in the file extension and make sure it's lowercase, because uh, I accidentally inserted a uppercase earlier on at the end of my video and ended up recording the whole thing again because I couldn't get this step to run. So make sure that your file extension is lowercase or you will get an error in the run script. And so the file content is based on our compose action. As before, our list rows is the same, the select is the same. The only difference now is the run script. Previously, it was based on the nothing in me file. But what we're going to be using now is a dynamic value from the uh, create file action. So we have the unique ID of the file or the folder, insert that there, hit the save, and I'll go ahead and stick that into test. So we've still got the error message here about the fact that we're retrieving large volumes of data from our table, but we're happy with that. I'll go ahead and test, run the flow, and so Compose has the file content from a new Excel file. We create a file, we list the rows, we create the um, array, and then we run the script based on the create file, which is run in six seconds. I go back to my demo team site. You can see we have a brand new Excel file. And when we open that, we have, hopefully, control end, a thousand records from our Dataverse table in our sheet called My New Sheet. So that is the end of the, the demonstration. I hope everyone was able to follow that, both the traditional method and the, the new method using Office uh, Excel scripts. And uh, as before, if you have any questions, if you're using this yourself, uh, any feedback or any ideas that you'd like me to, uh, to cover, please drop me a message, like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers, bye.